Why do investors say no? That is the age old question. Uh, why does any buyer say no to anything? You know, that's the question sellers have been asking since the beginning of time, since people have been selling anything. So let's take a look at some of the things that happen, at least in the syndication business. First of all, you might not have a deal that they like. Okay, it happens. Uh, you may not have a background that they trust, respect, like. They might not like you. Okay, so it could be a personal thing. Or three, you know, this happens all the time. Uh, people somehow make the assumption that just because you have money in your checkbook that you're going to be comfortable giving it to me. That's not true. That's not even close to true. People who, uh, you know, make money get comfortable in certain asset classes. So one of the things that you have to do is you have to say to somebody, look, uh, I deal in uh, apartment buildings. Are you interested in apartment buildings? Uh, I am or I'm not. I deal in ground-up development. I deal in uh, rehabilitating uh, single-family homes. I build student housing, uh, assisted living, whatever it is. I mean, somebody might have a passion for assisted living because they just think that that's a great marketplace. So you want to make sure to align your deal with the interests of the person that you're, that you're talking to that you're going to offer the opportunity. And then you have to make sure that that person knows that you've really uh, you know, done this before, that you've been down the path, that you understand exactly where you're going and how to make uh, the thing work, that you've got a track record of success. And when you have those things in place, then the investors can feel comfortable and they can move forward with you. And finally, uh, you, know, you have to make sure that they like you, that, uh, that, that's, uh, that that's all in place. Uh, because if, if they don't like you, if they don't like the deal, if they don't like the asset class, if any of these things don't work, and there probably are 50 other reasons uh, that somebody could come up with, either real or imaginary, but it doesn't matter what they are. If you don't have the connection with the investor where that person wants to uh, make it happen, and then there are some techniques that, uh, that can kind of help push somebody uh, a little bit. I don't think that if the gap is very wide, you're going to be successful no matter what uh, you do. But if the person's kind of sitting on the fence, there probably are some things that you can do uh, to create some urgency, uh, you know, talk about, uh, you know, scarcity of the deal. There's only a handful of shares left. If that's true, I mean, if it's not true, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play a lot of games. But uh, there are some things that you can do to kind of speed the process up. But fundamentally, the person won't even be interested if you don't have some of the other big issues uh, under control. So think about those things the next time you're pitching a deal or getting ready to think about who your investors are going to be and, uh, and why they might say yes or why they might have to say no. And if you do the things right, they'll say yes a lot more often than they do now. So given all that, this is a great business. Just go out and stake your claim.